I love working in A&E. It's a very interesting place. We see a lot of patients. We diagnose, we treat, we discharge, all within four hours most of the time. And if we can't discharge them, we admit them. So we have inpatients as well as outpatients. A lot happens in an A&E. We resuscitate, we anesthetize, we perform surgery, we even deliver babies. And often, we are the place of last resort for the most vulnerable in our society. So when you hear about plans to downgrade an A&E, it's all these things that are being jeopardized. A downgraded A&E doesn't deal with any blue light emergencies. It has no resuscitation facilities whatsoever. It only admits low risk patients for short periods of time. A downgraded A&E doesn't have an intensive care unit. It doesn't offer acute surgery or a doctor led maternity unit. It doesn't have acute medicine wards or pediatric wards. It doesn't have a lot of things. But there's more at stake. An A&E is a vital training ground for a whole host of NHS staff. Medical and nursing students, trainee surgeons, anaesthetists, GPs. None of these can do core parts of their training in a downgraded A&E. They have to leave. And that means fewer and fewer doctors and nurses throughout the NHS with training in emergency care. Those in charge of the downgrading claim that hacking out, subcontracting or selling off parts of the NHS is no big deal. They say it will simply force people to visit their GPs. But we don't have enough GPs. They are already overworked and demoralized. And most importantly, they're not equipped to deal with emergencies the way an A&E does. So where will the patients go?